Took him a little bit of time, but Joe Flacco is coming into his own. You know, I don't know if it's an achievement to burn the Browns' defense, but they did work a number on Eli, so... You just gotta take what you can get sometimes in this league, and Flacco um, led the Ravens back when they were down by two touchdowns, made some very nice throws. He wasn't just managing this game, he was really... He had to go out there and help his team win it. So, I was very impressed with him hitting Clayton and Mason for two long touchdowns, not turning it over, um, really doing a nice job. Another, the other r big rookie they have right now, Ray Rice, big, big game from him, the breakout game they've been waiting for, because up until this point, he's just been kind of a body, you know, he's there, they can feed him the ball, and he'll give them a couple yards, but... He's been a body. Um, on on Sunday, he was a complete playmaker. So, always fun to watch these rookies. <clears throat> um, you know, there's not a lot to say. Um, really, that was pretty much the Ravens' offense. You had Flacco to Mason and Clayton, and Ray Rice running the ball. What the hell happened? Has happened to Todd Heath these last three years? That's what I want to know. He, he, he was a bona fide playmaker, top five tight end. Where, where did he go? Um, you know, defensively, little bit of a shoddy performance. They got the big turnover at the end when they needed it. They got the big defensive touchdown. Not a lot of pressure. Um, just not a dominant defense. Just a very average defensive performance. So, you know, they're obviously a very good defense, but... Sometimes these things happen. Cleveland side. Brady Quinn is in, and I'm very excited for Thursday Night Football when he gets his first NFL start. Um, that's most of what i got to say here. I mean, Derek Anderson, that's the um, probably the end of his NFL career. I really don't, I don't see him repeating his success of last season at any point for any team. Um, I will say this. On a poor Browns team this year, Sean Rogers is playing very nice. He he deserves the Pro Bowl. <coughs> Chiefs and Bucks. I don't know what to make of this Bucks team right now. They really should have beaten Dallas last week, and they were getting throttled by Kansas City for a while. They were getting throttled, and. You know, they they had a couple of unfortunate turnovers that put the Chiefs in great position to score. And something has happened to Tyler Thigpen. Something has snapped in his brain. And he's playing like a good quarterback. And, you know, he's playing like a quarterback that I don't think he is. I'm sorry, I just cannot believe that Tyler Thigpen is actually going to be a good NFL quarterback. Um... Oh, Jamal Charles got uh, a lot of touches, and he made the most of them. Jamal Charles had a very good game. I want to see him play more as the season goes on. I think he's better than Colby Smith. I thought he was a little underrated in college at Texas. <coughs> you know, I like the play calling that Kansas City's putting together. They're getting the ball to Tony Gonzalez. And sometimes teams, when they fall into a rut, they don't get the ball to their best player on offense, and Tony Gonzalez is that, and they're making a con concerted effort to get him the ball, so I like that, I definitely like that. Defensively, they forced timely turnovers, uh, the Brandon brothers, um, Brandon Carr and Brandon Flowers, the corner, the cornerbacks, they're starting, they're making plays, so that's promising for their future, because they had a good draft, and it's only looking better with each passing week, but meltdown at the end it's one thing for them to score a couple times and make the game close I would expect that that last touchdown was bad man that that was they're gonna be hearing about that how can you let a receiver get behind you in that situation that's <sighs> Tampa Bay don't know what to think about them right now this was a game where they turned it over like four times and that's not their football. That's not the way they play. So I'm willing to look at that and say, well, that's not something they usually do. They can probably bounce back from that. 
and they won anyway. It's not like they had to eat the loss because of it. They they managed that great comeback and won it overtime. But um, you know, it's I don't know what to make of them right now. <coughs> that division is actually another one that's going to be really competitive and fun to watch down the stretch. Uh, Houston, Minnesota. Biggest story here was Jared Allen got hurt and Matt Schaub got hurt. So those are two fairly significant blows. Much more so for the Vikings that are fi who are pretty much fighting for their lives right now and have to play Green Bay next week. Um, you know the Farad switch is working out for him. Farad actually made some big throws. On um, you know he had two huge plays to bury in a touchdown to uh, Shianko. And Adrian Peterson obviously had a fantastic day. He's putting together another possibly Pro Bowl season. The Vikings found the end zone. They weren't settling for no field goals. They found the end zone. Uh, plenty of pressure. You know, Jared Allen had a good game before he got hurt. I really like what I see out of Kevin Williams this year. He's probably been the best defensive tackle in the league after Albert Hainsworth. So, I don't know if this Vikings team is going to compete, but... Looks pretty good right now. Houston. Houston. Um, I don't know why it's so hard to get the ball to Andre Johnson. Matt Schaub. You know, it looks like these last few games he had figured it out. He had this problem all of last season and some of this season. I don't know why they're not trying to get him the ball more. He's their playmaker. You live or die with Andre Johnson. And, you know, I'll give props to Owen Daniels. He's an underrated tight end. He made some good plays out there, but you got to get the ball to Andre Johnson. He's the playmaker. Either he does well and your team does well. If he's not doing well, you're going to be hard-pressed. I mean, I saw I was watching GameCast, and I saw Shop throwing pass after pass to some guy named Leach. Well, I think he's the fullback or something. I, I don't know. Other than that, and the um, they had a couple of red zone turnovers. Rosenfels threw an uh, interception. Um, Schaub threw a red zone interception. They played well. They were able to move the ball. They ran the ball fairly well. They were able to be productive. And if it wasn't for the red zone turnovers, they probably would have taken this game. But, well, good teams cash in when they get down there. Viking, uh, excuse me, Cardinals and Rams. You know, some of these... It's it's kind of sad to me to see what might be the final moments of Edger and James's career because he's he looks like he's been replaced. He didn't touch the ball once in this game. He, uh, Hightower took every carry. Tim Hightower, 22 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown. He played well. That's the important part. He played well enough to make the coaching staff probably go, well, he's our guy. So, Edron James, if he gets carries the rest of the season, he's not going to be the main guy. It's got to be, uh, looks like it's going to be Hightower, a <clears throat> little bit of Arrington, J.J. Arrington, and the Cardinals are just going to pass the ball most of the game. And he had a great career. He was great in Indy. Um, he chose to leave Indianapolis at the wrong time. <clears throat> and he had a great career. The injury in 02 really set him back, so let's moment of silence for Edger James' career. Probably, probably. Hopefully he can make some kind of comeback with maybe another team. Okay, moment of silence over. Good game by Arizona. Warner went off. He's having a Pro Bowl. Maybe, maybe if things work out for him in MVP season, Anquan Bolden. You know, he's making it work with guys like Jeremy Irvin and Steve Irvin and Steve Preston, too. This isn't all about Bolden and Fitz. He's making it work with whoever goes out there, and you got to applaud that. Um, some big turnovers by the Cardinals' defense. They had the one pick six. They got good pressure. And other than that one big play early to, uh, some, to Stanley, which was actually his first uh, catch of his career, and it went for an 80-yard touchdown, which is interesting enough in and of itself. They, you know, they just did just about anything you could want, and they pulled away in the fourth quarter with, uh, I think it was 24 fourth quarter points. 
Dante Hall, Drew Bennett went on IR for the Rams. It seems a little meaningless at this point, but Dante Hall was a guy I hate to see him go down, and that's about it for that game.